there's Thomas letting us all know who's in charge. In this last few years, suddenly we have 45 countries around the world who have banned the use of animals in circuses. So I think the message for us is we, we have to stick with it. The world is moving in our direction. We've got seven in their cages and being loaded, on, loaded onto the truck. Um, it's just now a question of keep pressing on. Um, we just got to get through this day. If we keep going, we're going to get there. It feels like we're starting to really make progress now. Once we've got them on the trucks and they're in their cages and they get them covered, we're nearly there. When we find them, they're, you know, they're in very, very small cages um, that fit on the back of trucks. Bare bars, bare boards, and sometimes you can have like six large animals in one, one small space like that. Uh, a lot of the time, you know, there isn't enough space to lie down properly. They can't really stretch out their whole bodies. And certainly a lot of the lions, we've seen them packed so densely, they can't lie down. I mean, in Guatemala, for example, the only thing the tigers and lions were fed is chicken feet. Now, that's not enough to grow a healthy body. We've produced a lot of video evidence of what happens to animals behind the scenes in the circuses. You know, if people see a bunch of animals suddenly rush into the circus ring and they look happy, they're not. Someone behind the curtain has an iron bar or a club in their hand. That's what they're running away from. So we have to start with that to know that these animals are afraid all of their lives. They lose all aspects of life that make it worth living. All the kind of joy and pleasure of life is gone. We'll go to the circuses with the police and the wildlife officials, seize the animals and we'll take them back to a temporary rescue centre and then find them homes abroad. This is the five lions and 12 tigers rescued from circuses in Guatemala. Animal Defenders International is flying them to our sanctuary in South Africa. And this flight is going to take us from Guatemala to Mexico, to Belgium, to Doha, and then finally to Johannesburg. 17 lions and tigers from Guatemala, just arrived in South Africa. Here they come. Here they come. The overriding thing that's in your mind is that you have to hang in there and we have to win because otherwise they die. And every moment you'll remember their very existence is dependent upon us. And we can't afford to back off, we can't afford to let go. Everybody's off. Everybody's off there on South African land. And through there you can see our final couple of crates. That is an incredible experience to see an animal who's never seen grass, never had the sun on their head because they've been in a cage, never touched a bush. Our tiger has never been in a pool. Um, they've never played with a catnip box. Taking her first steps into the feeding camp. Beyond the feeding camp, you can see there's another fence. That's their main enclosure. That's much bigger. The idea of the feeding camp is they can get used to the new environment. 
in a, a, a good spacious place but not too big so that they feel intimidated. What you're seeing here is very good enrichment for Sasha and Kamal. And they may have hair all over their body and we don't understand what they're saying, but there's a being in there with a personality and likes and dislikes. I've seen all of the, the you know, they all have the favorite things and somebody else likes something. Um, and I do deliberately call them someone and somebody because there is a person in there. Might be a lion person or a tiger person or an elephant person, but there's a personality in there. And if we recognize that, we can change our attitude towards them. They're here, they've arrived and they're safe and their new life is starting today. <laughs>